Have their queer mothers committed a serious crime? Or are they victims whose desperate wish to save a loved one made them vulnerable and open to a clever scam? That's for the court to decide. In this video, let's explore the medical issues leading to the recent arrest in the UK of the Nigerian former Deputy Senate President and his wife. Yes, the news of the arrest of Enugu State-born lawyer and former Deputy Senate President and his wife Beatrice, a chartered accountant in the UK, broke the airwaves. The charge against them is conspiring to traffic a child to the UK from Nigeria for the purpose of harvesting their organs. This news has many ramifications because two young people are at the heart of the story. One is extremely sick while the other has either been exploited or managed to play a rather clever scam depending on whose speculation you want to listen to. And it is the second one that holds the interest of the court. But the case also raises many questions about specific medical procedures and laws guiding medical procedure in the United Kingdom. So I thought it would be great to look at these medical issues and terms discussed for us to to learn more. From the information available to us in the public space, the young daughter of the accused couple, a recent university graduate, suffers with chronic kidney disease and has developed kidney failure. In other words, her disease appears to be at a stage where a kidney transplant is essential for her to survive. Her parents appear to have arranged for a young man to visit the United Kingdom from Nigeria to donate a kidney for their daughter. And at this point, it all becomes blurry. You've probably heard many different accounts, which are still speculative to all of us. On the one hand, the potential donor is a young adult of 21 years who arrived in the UK as a living donor. However, he was eventually found not to be an organ match for the Aquarimadu's daughter. So people feel this meant that this young man would lose financially from whatever deal was arranged at the beginning. Faced with the possibility of returning to a hard life or hard times in Nigeria, he turned against the Aquarimadu's. He presented himself to the UK police as a victim victim of human trafficking to provide him with a cushion that would allow him continued stay in the UK. The other side of the story is considerably more grave and the reason for the arrest. The UK prosecutor alleges a 15-year-old homeless boy was transported from Lagos to Heathrow with the purpose of harvesting organs. So in this version of the story, the potential donor is a boy of 15 years who was induced to come to the UK. He was allegedly brought into the United Kingdom with a falsified passport arranged by his sponsors indicating that his age is 21. However, on assessment at the Royal Free Hospital in London, he was determined to be underage and possibly unaware of his role in the bid to procure a healthy kidney for the Madu's daughter. Here lies the issue of exploitation and trafficking. These ethical issues have raised red flags for the medical team and meant that the plan to use this individual as a donor could no longer proceed. Apparently, the stories allege he also ran away from the home where he'd been staying with the Madu's and where he had reportedly received poor treatment at their hands. Having spent two days on the streets in London, he presented himself at a police station which, according to reports, triggered the investigation into the former Deputy Senate President and his wife. The Aquarimadus were arrested a month later at Heathrow Airport, ostensibly en route to Turkey to source a new kidney donor for their child. So this is a summary of the alleged issues as we know them. Recall this case is now in court in the UK. The case has also been adjourned until the 7th of July 2022, when it will be decided which country the United Kingdom or Nigeria has jurisdiction to hear the case. But what are the matters of medical interest in this case? Well, as you've just seen a lot of the time, doctors must make decisions affecting human life and consider the ethics of those decisions. Ethics are moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. In countries like the UK, medical ethics are taken very seriously. Doctors who breach ethics in any decision-making around patient care could be struck off the medical register and become unable to practice or convicted of a crime if that is deemed appropriate. Now, some of the medical issues here are around one, organ donation and transplant. Two, 
organ harvesting and trafficking laws in the United Kingdom. Three, safety or safeguarding young people. And four, minors giving consent. But let's remember how we got here in the first place and talk about what is kidney failure. A healthy kidney is essential to life. Among several other functions, the kidney is responsible for removing waste from our bodies. Kidney failure refers to loss of the kidney functions and some may also know it as end-stage chronic kidney disease. In end-stage chronic kidney disease, an individual needs the process known as dialysis to remove the waste materials from their body on a regular basis as their kidneys can no longer do so. If the waste is allowed to accumulate in the body, the person will die. But while dialysis does this effectively, it has its downsides. It can be a time-consuming process. It can be inconvenient and there are other complications as well. This is why kidney failure is the most common reason for needing a kidney transplant. Illness with kidney failure is challenging and even more so with a young child or adult. There are a range of different symptoms and the condition effectively renders one unable to cope with many of life's daily activities or participate in everyday life, for example, going to school or going to work and so on. If you want to learn more about any future risk you may have have for developing kidney failure, please check out my video here where I talk about things that you should be doing now to minimize or reduce the risk of developing kidney failure as you grow older. A kidney transplant involves replacing an unhealthy kidney with a healthy one. And this brings us to the issue of organ donation for transplant. There is a black market for selling and procuring organs worldwide. The demand is incredibly high and sadly, Organ trafficking cartels have been built on the back of people's illness and desperation or the desire to make money. Innocent people have lost their lives in the quest for organ dealers to procure their organs illegally. This happens all over the world. In the UK, like many other countries with an organized organ donor pathway, any individual who requires a transplant is placed on a waiting list. According to the NHS Health A to Z website, people who need a kidney transplant but don't have a suitable living donor will have to wait until a suitable diseased donor kidney becomes available. On average, the waiting time for a deceased donor kidney transplant is two and a half to three years. Waiting times are so long because the demand for donated kidneys in the UK is far higher than the available supply of donors. Kidney donors are particularly required from people of non-white ethnic origin because rates of kidney disease are especially high in people of South Asian African and Caribbean ethnic origin. However, there are not many donors from these communities, it says. So this tells you what drives the black market demand and why people could do nearly anything to find a donor for a loved one. In addition, there are strict rules that govern the allocation of organs to people on the waiting list. The NHS website goes on to say, demand for donations from recently deceased people far outstrips supply. So there are strict but necessary guidelines about how donations are allocated. Children and young adults are generally given priority if a matched donation becomes available as they'll most likely gain a longer term benefit from a transplant. So even if the Equerimadu's daughter has a priority position as a young person, getting a matching donor from a person of African background can be challenging. Usually organs for transplant come from people who have just passed away. On many occasions, as a GP, I have been called to provide information about a person's medical background and suitability as an organ donor in the instance that they are close to death or have just passed away. However, you can have a transplant with an organ like the kidney from a living donor. This living donor will have a similar tissue type to the person with kidney failure and will be willing to donate their kidney. Remember, it is possible to live a healthy life with one kidney and a person who volunteers to donate their organ is making an amazing sacrifice. The UK also has the NHS Organ Donor Register. This is a database where people can go on to indicate their wish to have their organs harvested after death. This means their organ will be made available to someone who is matching 
on the transplant waiting list. According to the NHS donor register, if you have not recorded an organ donation decision, the starting position for adults in England and Wales is that donation should go ahead. This is what is known as deemed consent. And you may also hear it referred to as the opt-out system for organ donation. So what this happens is that if a person passes on in England and in Wales and is not within the exclusion groups and has not registered a decision to the donor register, their organs could be harvested. But of course, consideration and discussions are held with the family members before such decisions are taken. You can learn more about organ donation and kidney transplant in the UK by checking out the relevant websites. I will leave the links to them in the description box. Please let me know if you're finding this video helpful. Don't forget to like the video and consider subscribing to my channel. Now, let's talk about organ harvesting. Organ procurement is the process of removing an organ from a lifeless person or a living donor. Forced organ harvesting is the illegal practice of surgically removing a victim's organs against their will. In the UK, several laws underpin the removal of organs and transplants, including the Human Tissue Act 2004 was introduced to ensure that living donors have made an informed and voluntary decision to donate their organ free from duress, coercion and reward. The UK ratified the Council of Europe Convention on Action Against Trafficking in Human Beings. The Council of Europe Convention Against Trafficking Human Organs, which criminalizes the trafficking of human organs and to take measures to protect victims. It is an international legal binding document to address the issue from a criminal law perspective. The UK signed the convention in March 2015. Modern Slavery Act 2015 brings together former legislation and includes organ harvesting as an offence. The Declaration of Istanbul was signed in 2008 and provides the ethics around transplants with the aim of tackling transplant tourism, trafficking and commercialization on an international scale. Medicine and Medical Devices Act 2021 prevents complicity in forced organ harvesting within the UK medicine industry with appropriate consent required for imported human tissues for use in medicines. The process of handling organs is also strictly regulated by the HTA, the Human Tissue Authority. This is a government body that regulates organizations that remove, store and use human tissue for research, medical treatment, post-mortem examination, education and training, and display in public. They also give approval for organ and bone marrow donations from living people. So you have a wealth of evidence that indicates that organ handling, donation and transplant are taken extremely seriously in the United Kingdom. The law against human trafficking, the other aspect of this case, is also underpinned by the Modern Slavery Act of 2015. Let's talk about safeguarding. Safeguarding is critical in this case because of the suspicions that the proposed living donor is a minor. Let's recall, the prosecutor alleges a 15-year-old homeless boy was transported from Lagos to Heathrow with the purpose of harvesting organs. Safeguarding refers to every activity taken to secure the safety and well-being of a vulnerable person or individual at risk of exploitation of whatever nature. All health workers should be aware of and be on the lookout for potential safeguarding issues that could affect their patients. They should also be able to raise a safeguarding concern that will lead to an assessment of the individual safety and involve the UK Social Services Department or police if necessary. It is speculated that this matter in the case of the Aquarium Madus was brought to light by a member of the medical team who recognised during assessment that the proposed living donor was a boy of 15 years. Another interesting issue that has come up in the discussions is the matter of consent from a minor. Some people are of the view that a young person or minor cannot give consent. In England, Wales and Northern Ireland, a minor is a person under the age of 18. This is also true for Scotland. And here it is useful to introduce the terms Gaelic competence 
and the Fraser Guidelines. In summary, the Fraser Guidelines allow doctors in the UK to treat a minor with a medical procedure or medicines without permission from their parents or guardians. Both Gillick Competency and Fraser Guidelines refer to a legal case from the 1980s which looked at whether doctors should be able to give contraceptive advice or treatment to young people under age 16 without parental consent. The Fraser guidelines still apply to advice and treatment in contraception, sexual health and birth control and so on. But Gillick competency is often used in a wider context to help assess whether a young person has the maturity to make their own decisions and to understand the implications of these decisions. So regarding a particular medical procedure or treatment in the UK, a 15-year-old potentially can give consent, but the doctor must clearly demonstrate that they are Gillick competent. This means they demonstrate a suitable level of awareness, understand the medical procedure or treatment for which they are giving consent, including the risks and complications, and can weigh the pros and cons of the decision, that is, the implication of having or not having the treatment. In practice, of course, doctors will encourage the young person to involve their parents or guardians in decisions like this. But if such a minor is Gillick competent, they can consent to any medical procedure or treatment and the law supports them regardless of the parent or guardian's views. Now, this may or may not be an issue in the Aquarium Madu's case. Still, I thought to chip that bonus fact in here, given the discussions going round about consent from the minor. These are some of the medical issues this case has thrown up into our awareness. What do you think about these issues we've talked about? And are you on the side of those who believe the Aquarium Adus have been scammed? Or those who feel they were trying to exploit a minor? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Let's remember that at the very center of this is a seriously ill young woman who deserves our sympathy, prayers and hope she finds a suitable donor soon. We also wait to see how the investigation of the UK Metropolitan Police pans out. Regardless of their understandable desperation over their daughter's ill health, if there was truly exploitation of a young person as alleged by the prosecution, that is a heinous crime. We've talked a lot about the NHS in this video. Please check out this other one if you're interested in learning more about the NHS and UK health services, especially as a new immigrant from Nigeria or someone who's due to arrive shortly. In it, I share basic information to help you get the best care in the UK if or when you need it. Please show this video lots of love by liking it, consider subscribing to my channel, and I'll see you in the comments.